then there's a bunch of ones where the domain is all row numbers. So the entire first column for all of them is all row numbers. The domain is all row numbers. Um, the range is y is greater than zero. Now I, I just I haven't written it in in column form and then zero to infinity. That's just um, interval notation. It's the same thing. I don't care which one of these you use. It's the same thing. Um, y is greater than zero. Now this is never going to equal zero. It's going to get really, really tiny, but it's never going to equal. Why, why would an exponential never actually equal zero? Because, you, yeah, you're just, you're multiplying by the same thing every time, so the number is going to get small, but it's never actually going to disappear. It may get too small for that year, but it's never actually going to be nothing. Um, or you can look at it from the perspective of, okay, so if it were to equal zero, going to look at that graph here. Um, each of the x's also increasing. E is a number, even though it is a change variable because it's a letter. E is a number. It is uh, it's Euler's number. That's why it's called E. Um, Euler was a mathematician. He did a lot of different stuff. He did stuff in calculus. He did, um, he did a lot of stuff that had biology um, implications. And so um, this number is very common in some of those. E, the actual very, uh, value of E, there are two cases called E on the calculator or on the grid. There's an E over here um, if you're division. Okay, that's just plain old E by itself. Um, that is, this is the value of E. So 2.718 is approximately the value of E. Um, so it is a base greater than 1. So that's why E is the actual increasing function. Um, but more often than not, we use the other location of the E button second and the LN button. We're getting ready. We're going to talk about what all these buttons are going to mean in the class. So it's not that long. And you can edit the keyframe in it. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, but that automatically puts you an exponent there because E is usually always associated with an exponent. So. Um, I actually want a graphic so that I can talk about the asymptotes and in behavior here for a second. All right. <coughs> okay. Now, we're used to talking about asymptotes in terms of rational functions. Clearly, these are not rational functions, but rational functions are not the only functions that have asymptotes. Um, now, they're not vertical. They don't have any vertical asymptotes, but it technically does have a horizontal asymptote because it's
as that one up there, I just squeezed it all in one box. Not very effectively, but I just squeezed it in one box. Okay, good. Like I said, great if you get that. If you didn't, not a big huge deal. Okay, but I did need to mention it so that you've at least heard it before. Um, that's a concept called limits that are a big chunk of calculus, actually. But don't let that intimidate you. Okay, they do actually make sense when I get to teach more in depth about it. Okay, uh, let's talk about transformations a little bit. We did this with absolute value functions, we did it with square root functions. Let's talk about it in terms of exponential functions here. <coughs> absolute value of x plus 1 moves it left 1. The square root of x plus 2 moves it left 2. Similar thing's going to happen here. If, you, if, if you're not quite convinced of that, then drop it. Put in 2 to the x, the original, what we're trying to compare it to, and 2 to the, if you're doing it, you've got to put x minus 1 in parentheses, or else it'll only raise 2 to the x, and it'll subtract 1 from that. It's not the same thing and graph it. Okay, here's the original. And here comes the uh, second one. Now, it's, it's a little bit harder when you're actually going to need a little bit wider of a window to really um, observe this well. <coughs> um, so let me change, change my maximum to, let's go with five. That'll give us a little better, better glance. There's the original, this one's the one we're comparing it to. You can see that that is further over. Um, it's kind of hard to, do, to describe it or to, to notice it just from the picture, but you can tell that it is uh, right one unit. <coughs> is what that right there does. Now, we didn't run into this one too much with the absolute value and the square root, um, but if there's a negative with the x, what that does is it reflects across the y-axis. And I'm going to convince you of that two different ways, okay? Number one, we're going to look at the graph. Okay, so we'll graph 2 to the x, and we'll graph 2 to the negative x. <coughs> There's the original. Now my window is not symmetric, but you can see that this one here, and it's, it's, it's uh, let me change that to negative 5, so we can see the symmetry here. That's 2 to the x, this is 2 to the negative x. They're mirror images of each other. We've taken the graph and we've flipped it or reflected it across the y-axis. Another way to convince you of that is, um, remember how we rewrote this at the very beginning, 2 to the negative x? We rewrote that using properties of exponents. That was equivalent to 
one half to the x. Well, one half to the x, base is less than one, that means it's going to be decreasing, and it's just the reciprocal. Um, <clears throat> so that's another way to justify that it reflects across the last. All right, and when we have a coefficient in front, what did that do to our graph? What happened with our absolute value or with our square root functions when we multiplied the function by something? It changed the slope, okay, or it changed our y values. It stretched out our graph and made it taller. That is a vertical stretch. <clears throat> by a factor of three. So if we Okay, it's like you take all your all your values when you did two to the x, okay, you still get the same answer, but then you multiply by three. So it's three times higher than it previously was. Um, let's see how that looks when we graph it. Three times two to the x. Here's the original, two to the x. And here comes three times two to the x. Now it kind of might look like it shifts it, okay? It's not really a true shift, okay? It's just multiplying all your values. So at zero, our original y value was one. When you multiply that by three, that means that our first value is at three. That's why it looks like it shifts. It's not a shift, okay? It's not the exact same shape we moved up. Um, it's all those y values are <coughs> greater than they were. If I extended my window, if I changed my y maximum to 12, so that we can see a little bit more, uh, it would be a little bit more better. So the original is the transformation, you can definitely see that those y values are greater. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about it in terms of e to the x and look at some different ones, similar but different. Okay. Um, e to the 2x, well, anytime something's with the variable, it's the opposite of what we expect it to be. So we expect that if we multiplied by 2, it'd be a stretch. But the opposite of stretching is shrinking. Okay? So this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of 2. Now, when we get ready to graph this, you may say, well, Ms. Redman, no, no, I don't really believe that. But let me, let me illustrate here in a second. Okay. E to the x is the original. We want to compare that to e to the 2x. Okay, here's e to the x. Here comes e to the 2x. You may say, well, that looks like a vertical vertical stretch, okay? Well, let's think about this for a second. If you stretch something this way, what's its only option to do as a result? To go up as well. If you take the same function and you squish it this way, it's got to go up. It can't go anywhere else because it can't be less than zero. The key difference is right here. If you look at this part of the graph, on the last one with the vertical stretch, that part of the graph was above the original curve. Look what happened this time. It's below the original curve. That's the difference between the vertical stretch and the um, <coughs> excuse me, horizontal shrink. Okay. Part of it does look similar graphically, um, but there are, there are some slight differences there. Okay. If we have negative e to the x, well, if the negative with the x reflected this across the y-axis, then what's going to happen here